First, I want to make a comment. Uh, Dr. Davis, I just want to say thank you for looking for a solution. So many times we have seminars like this where we just talk about the problem, the problem, but we don't ask for solutions, and I just want to say thank you for that. Yes, I agree. Uh, my question is, a couple of years ago I heard about uh, nonstick pans and the chemicals that came out of nonstick pans and how they would kill birds that were in the house. So I threw away all my nonstick pans, but recently... Um, on one of the shopping networks, they had a product that did not have, I believe it was called P-O-H-A or something like that. It was the chemical. And they said it was that free. And so I ordered it. Mm -hmm. But I felt guilty when I had it home because I kept thinking, is this real? It doesn't have that chemical. So I just want to hear your comments on that. All right. The original perfluorinated organic acid compounds, PFOA, uh, contained fluor fluorinated compounds that could when heated, become airborne, and did kill parakeets and other birds. Okay, that did happen. That was real. Um, but as uh, Elizabeth has said, we often go chasing one chemical after another. We ban one, and then we come up with a substitute that could be even worse. And in the case for fluorinated and brominated flame retardants, in 1976 we banned something called TRIS, which was a chlorinated uh, fluorinated flame retardant that used to be put into children's pajamas. And 20 years later, it ended up in mattresses in California because the state of California was persuaded by the chemical industry that you needed to have a standard that required that urethane foam not catch on fire for eight seconds and that this was going to save lives from fire deaths. Well, it's not true. It, there's no evidence it saved any lives. But it is true that the chemical industry has made billions of dollars from selling people, mattress manufacturers, fabric manufacturers, furniture manufacturers, and now requiring that there be some kind of flame retardant in those materials. Recently, the state of California succeeded in reforming that law, but I'm not so sure that the yeah. substitute is much better. This pan is, does have, is free of the chemicals that used to kill birds. Um, but we don't know. Uh, it has not been fully evaluated. Yeah, and, and I ask Elizabeth. And to... I'll just say, I saw those ads. I live in Portland, Oregon, and I kept passing this one kitchen store that said eco-friendly, you know, non-stick pans. And I ended up doing a whole chapter in my book called Out of the Frying Pan because I got so obsessed about trying to find out what was in these alternative pans. And the fact was you can't really find out what is in them. Some of them have a version of that we call it generically Teflon of that original nonstick coating, and it may not have the exact compound, but it has one very close to it, or it's made with some of the same sort of chemical bits and pieces. And the ones that may have something else, we have no idea what it is mostly because you can't actually get that information. So, so it's, it's the devil you know yeah. versus the devil you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Um, I wanted to say thank you to all of you. Um, Brian, I read your book on killer clothes, and I wanted to know where, you may, where we're at at this level of toxic chemicals in clothes. Well, I won't name any names, but one of the most famous designers in the world, I approached them after the book was finished that Dr. Anna Marie and I wrote and challenged them to be the co-author of that book because I wanted to impress the fabric and design industry that they are contributing to killing people. Uh, we quote two landmark studies in there just on breast cancer and nylon, polyester, man-made chemical bras where both cited that women who consistently wear these bras have a six-time greater chance of breast cancer. And flame retardants, uh, we talk about it's cancer-causing, even though they eliminated the one that Deborah mentioned. There are several others that cause cancer. Uh, just before the book was put to bed, my research assistant went to Berkeley to an international conference with concerned scientists, concerned chemists. And uh, he came back and stunned me. You know, whenever I think I know all the bad things, um, surprise, there's more bad things. You know, you turn the rock over. So I would like to tell you an optimistic thing that we're moving more so into natural fibers. I will say one optimistic thing. They're much more available. 
and they're getting out of the granola, my generation's design, that everyone has to look like a hippie wearing them, and they are designing them. Some of the better designers now have organic clothing. Uh, you've got to watch some of these new clothes have as many chemicals on them, and you'll articulate this as well as I can, uh, made out of wood. Just because it's made out of wood, how do they process it? Just because it's made out of bamboo, how do they process it? And so in killer clothes, we write that very clearly. Organic cotton is the best and easiest to find. Uh, why? Because 25% of all the pesticides on planet Earth are used in growing cotton. How many of you knew that? And how about if you put it next to your genitalia every day? How about if you buy, and I won't name any brands, uh, a cotton underwear, but it is filled with pesticide? Well, all of this increases estrogens. Genetic modification increases estrogen, electromagnetic fields, throw off estrogens and other hormones, and chemicals do that. So at least walk out of here if you're not already doing it and buy organic undergarments. If you're not doing that, you're not serious. You're just sitting here as a hobby because that's the first step. And then slowly but surely get natural fiber clothes and try to make as many. Women have an easier time in the workplace than men. Uh, make as many as possible organic.